Net worth is the straightforward measure of your financial health. While it does not reveal everything, keeping track of your net worth is beneficial for a number of reasons. This will show you how much progress you're making. Building wealth takes time, and it can be disappointing when you don't seem to be making the progress you'd like. It can feel like nothing is improving from one week to the next, especially if the value of your assets fluctuates. If the stock market performs poorly for a few months, it can be incredibly discouraging because your net worth may actually decrease. It's a good idea to keep an eye on the big picture and the changes over time. When you compare your net worth from one year to the next, odds are you'll observe progress. This video will show you how to determine your net worth. Following that, we'll talk about the greatest strategies to build your net worth and lastly, what's more important than your net worth. Welcome to Cashflow Canvas, where we teach lessons about investment and money-saving techniques. If you want to make your financial future better, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. The first step is to total your assets. This can be perplexing depending on how many you have. An asset is everything you own that has value for the purposes of calculating net worth. This includes any cash you have, as well as funds or stocks in brokerage accounts, retirement accounts, cryptocurrencies, and financial institution accounts. Include whatever real estate equity you have, whether it is in your home dwelling or an investment property. Subtract the amount owed on the property from its value to calculate your equity. If your house is worth $400,000, but you owe $400,000, your equity is $100,000. You can acquire a general estimate of your home's value by using a site like Zillow or Redfin. Use similar property sales in your neighborhood even better. Keep in mind that getting an accurate value without selling it is impossible. Therefore, this is only an estimate. The same method may be used for any vehicle you possess, and its worth can be determined using a site such as Kelly Blue Book or Carvana. As a general rule, only evaluate items that could be sold for more than $100. This saves you the trouble of mentioning trivial items like a pair of shoes. Any debts you have must also be deducted from your net worth. This includes any money owed to you, such as college debts, medical expenses, or a loan from a friend or family member. If you have $50,000 in student loans, they have no collateral and thus count directly against your net worth. This is why a large proportion of recent college graduates have a negative net worth. Let's look at some examples of two persons in different situations. Bob is in his 20s and just graduated from college. Bob earns a good wage but has failed to save much money. He owns a $30,000 automobile with a $23,000 loan amount. He has some credit card debt from trying to relocate into a new apartment after college and while hunting for work. These amount to around $8,000 in total. He also has approximately $30,000 in student loan debt after college. However, he has been focusing on saving a little cash buffer before attempting to pay off the debts, which consists of $5,000 in a checking account and $7,500 in savings. He possesses a $30,000 car and $13,000 in cash for a total asset value of $43,000. Debts total $61,000 with $23,000 remaining on the auto loan $8,000 in credit card debt, and $30,000 in college loans. Bob's net worth is negative $18,000 after subtracting his assets of $43,000 from his debt of $61,000. Mary is in her 50s, has a good job, and has been frugal with her money throughout her career. She bought her house 15 years ago, and it is currently worth approximately $650,000, with a mortgage balance of $100,000. She saved for retirement and has $470,000 in a 401k and $190,000 in a Roth IRA. She has a couple months worth of expenses in her savings account totaling $23,000, plus another $10,000 in her checking account. Mary owns her car outright, and it is worth $18,000. After deducting her single debt of $100,000,
Her net worth is $1,261,000, making her a millionaire. You'll be able to track your financial success over time now that you know how to properly calculate your net worth. This can be accomplished using a spreadsheet, pen and paper, or an online net worth tracker. Making a routine of recording your net worth every few months or even once or twice a year will help you stay focused on the broader picture. There will be moments when you feel like you're going backward, which is usual when unforeseen charges come and you're forced to face a major expense. When the stock market or real estate market perform poorly, your net worth will most likely decrease. Your net worth is likely to fall. When this happens, try not to feel defeated. Instead, focus on things you can control. Before we go into why net worth isn't necessarily the best indicator of financial health, let's look at some things you can do to improve your financial situation. To begin, be frugal with your money and just buy what you can afford. It is critical to live within your means. When you get a raise or an increase in your income, don't go out and spend every last penny of it. If you get a $1,000 pay boost every month, don't finance a new car with an $800 payment and a $200 insurance increase. Instead, try spending $100 or $200 of the extra money and keeping the rest. Second, be serious about paying off your debt, particularly those with high interest rates and those that are harmful to your net worth, such as medical, student, or credit card debt. Investigate debt payoff strategies such as the debt avalanche or the debt snowball to help you become debt-free as quickly as feasible. Paying down your debt balances will always boost your net worth. Third, invest as much money as you can comfortably afford. When the markets are down, it is even more advantageous to invest aggressively because the assets are selling at a discount. Even if it does not appear to be increasing your net worth, you will be pleased with the contributions you made after the markets have recovered. Although net worth provides insight into your financial well-being, it is ultimately unimportant. What is most crucial to consider is the amount of money you receive in passive income. This is what will pay your bills and cover your daily expenses. The income will cover your lodging, transportation, food expenditures, and travel expenses. The amount of money you make without working will eventually determine when you can retire. What difference does it matter what your net worth is if you have a real estate portfolio that brings in $100,000 per year and your annual expenses are $60,000? You are financially independent when your passive income surpasses your expenses and you no longer need to work. Someone with a net worth of $3 million but no sources of passive income cannot retire. On the other hand, someone could have a net worth of $100,000 and be completely retired. Ideally, you should keep track of both your net worth and your passive income. This is not something you should do on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. In fact, keeping a careful eye on these data may cause more harm than good. Instead, do this quarterly, twice a year, or once a year, and you'll be astonished at how far you'll get. As we conclude, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found value in this video and learned something new, and I look forward to seeing you in our future videos. I would deeply value it if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support will help us to create more valuable content, and we can work together to secure your financial future. What are the key takeaways from this video that you can share in the comment section?